Hello and welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. In today's episode, we're going to take some plasma cut steel plate and some stainless steel and we're going to make grills for my project car. Stay tuned. All right, so if you've been watching the channel for long enough, you'll know that I've made carbon fiber parts for most of my car. So this is the front grill panel and all it needs, it needs a grill to go in it. Now, in the previous video, which is up over here, I think, which could, it could also be over there, but I think it's over here. Anyway, in the previous video, I made parts for the car. I made the hood trim for the car out of stainless steel and I can buy that part and I know I can buy the part, but that was all preparation for the grills, which I absolutely know I can't buy. I can get some grills for the car. I just can't buy the ones that I want for the car. And any of the ones that I found in the used market, they just haven't been all that great. So in this video, the preparation for making the hood trim is gonna help me, I hope. Uh, so the learning should be almost done towards being able to complete the next project, which is making the grills. Right. Uh, now, okay, now before anyone goes and starts to tell me that uh, grills are available, I know, I think I own most of them. So I have in my collection of stuff, let me just quickly go through the grill collection. When the car was last on the road and I was driving it lots and we were heading around the show circuit, I had made these. They're a laser cut grill. Uh, it's made out of 6061 aluminum. So that was fine. I sent it off to my chrome plater guy who I don't use anymore. And the chrome just falls right off this set of grills. There was a doubler on the front. They looked really good. They're a good looking grill um, and they're fine. But even though they're 6061, they're a quarter of an inch. So aluminum, even though they're aluminum, they're, uh, they're a quarter inch thick. And you know what? I weigh almost as much as my whole front grill panel. So that's, um, it's not worth repairing them at this point and getting them recut is not going to be inexpensive. So then I thought, well, I'll make them out of stainless steel. This was a long time ago now, probably 10 years. Uh, so I started in and I made some stainless steel blanks and I was heading for the look of the 63, 64 grill, 62, 63. Anyway, one of those sort of early 60s grills, not the earliest, earliest ones. The B16 cars had the really small aperture and I think those look dorky, but uh, the larger aperture ones with the grill surround and I thought, oh, I can make it out of stainless steel. Again, starting to get a little bit heavy and the project Whenever I get going on these things and I don't like the way it's going, I just stop. And then they sit on my shelf forever. I, I think you may have some idea what that's like. Then I bought a set. This is the grill I'm gonna try to simulate. I like the look of this grill. I don't like the look of this grill when the grill has been painted black. The, it's a three piece grill. So there's a backing part, a surround trim piece and a central rib that goes into the middle. So we're gonna make each one of those parts. We're not gonna make the grill. There's no reason to remake the grill. Uh, while these are a little bit crusty, they can be tidied up and reused pretty effectively once powder coated. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be an original part. That's gonna go back in the car. That's fine. The tricky part to make, which is the subject of today's video, is this surround part. Okay, so the surround part, it's from the factory, broken in the middle, because nothing in the factory is meant to fit all that precisely. And you can see how it's made. So if you have a look in. All right, so it's a piece of aluminum. This is just bright anodized, so it's not gonna be anywhere near as nice as the stainless steel one that I'm gonna make is gonna be. Uh, and then the edges are folded over. That I don't know how to do, so I'm gonna do some learning here. And I think I can hammer form this cove. It's just a simple cove here, all there is to it. So I should be able to hammer form that. And then I should be able to get that shape right. Now, the car, my car, my car was on the street for a lot of years and my neighbors were not always nice. So one of the reasons it ended up in the garage is that my neighbors smashed into the front of it. And even though the, the dent fit perfectly with the front bumper of her truck, uh, and I know she did it, she never admitted it. Uh, and I repaired this as best I could, but the fitment isn't great. But then I think, and Volvo people can probably uh, support that, the fitment of these parts was never great. 
right? So they're all meant to fit kind of close enough. And because they're aluminum, you could just mash them into position and they will sort of form to wherever the steel is. So that, that's actually a nice feature. Now I know the stainless steel is not gonna do that. The stainless steel, I'm gonna form it in one piece uh, and it's gotta fit pretty much perfectly. And at this point, I have no idea how any of this stuff's gonna work. Uh, so let's get to work and see if we can make this all happen. All right, because I've got that aluminum grill and I know it fits, it does fit the hole pretty nicely. I'm just tracing out the outline of it onto a piece of foam core. So I've got lots of foam core left over from the days when I was doing carbon fiber work. Uh, and I prefer it to cardboard. You don't have to work around the corrugations and other things and it's just waste material, so whatever. So rather than show endless hours of me uh, sanding this, I thought I would just give a quick demo of how easy it works just standard foam board. I've obviously used it more than once. <laughs> you know, keep it around the garage is really handy. The 80 grit side of this block though just forms it so nicely, so easy to do. This is the key to the whole project is just keep moving it in, right? Keep checking it. And then little bits, just little bits, just all this stuff. You, oh, I need to sand a ton off of it. And then it doesn't fit anymore. And it ends up as a nightmare. Now, what I've got to do here is actually create a couple of these plugs to simulate the height of that uh, original 60, early 60s trim piece, that round piece that we're putting in. Make a sandwich of two of these boards. So we'll get two of them fit. And then I have to space them up in order to get them to sit just right, because that'll give me the outside line for the dies. Okay, so that's all I needed to say here. We'll cut to a little bit more sanding, uh, and then we'll come back when that all is done. Yeah, so I keep checking it against the original grill part and just you know, making a few marks here and there for measurements that I'm going to take later. And then uh, in the one part goes, and then there's a sort of mid panel, and then there's a top panel. And I'm getting all of those things fit in. And as I, it has to fit just as precisely as I think it needs to. I probably went a little overboard looking back, right? When you have the videos to reflect on, you're always like, well, I guess it had to be as close to perfect as I could make it, but maybe not quite so anal. But uh, eh, it works in the end. Okay, so now we're happy with what we've done, but it may not be apparent what I was doing when I was doing it. So I'm going to walk you through it. Okay, so when I fit that first layer in, um, I'm, all, I'm looking for the bottom contour, not the top, right? So you can kind of see that I've got a bit of a gap, but it's touching on the bottom. So it's touching to the back of the grill. This mid layer, it doesn't really matter. Again, I need 9 sixteenths of an inch. So these are uh, 3 sixteenths each. So three of those together, 9 sixteenths, that works fine. And then the top layer, I am looking for this top contour. Okay, so as I was going around and making it, you can now see that it's tight to the top contour. Okay, so now I'm going to have to take these parts. I'm going to draw the top and the bottom. Uh, I may draw the mid layer, I don't know. I'll draw the top and the bottom anyway. I can't be assured that this is 100% symmetrical. It's going to be pretty close, so we'll go with it from there. But um, this way I can, in, you know, I can be sure. I, I, I guess I could take that first one and then just, you know, offset it in the drawing. But you're never going to be 100% sure that all of these curves and all of the other things are going to match up. So when I tuck it in tight, I can just about see, you know, it's not a perfect science and you'll never be able to see it. But I can almost see that 3 16 mark over here. And if we end up a little bit more or less than that, again, no one's going to care. It just needs to be in there. Okay, so that's that done. We're gonna take these, draw them, and then I'm just gonna photograph them and I put them into Fusion 360 and I do the drawing on the computer from there.
All right, so that's the wood cut that's going to be the sandwich between the layers. Now, the mill scale's got to come off, and then I'm going to use some construction adhesive to stick all this mess together. Uh, I did end up in the middle of this. The mill scale drove me so crazy, I made another video. Uh, so go watch the mill scale video as I figured out how to get that junk off metal parts. All right, so with the mill scale cleaned off of these parts, again, watch the mill scale video. So they're clean and tidy now, so we're not going to have any problems with the ad adhesive. And the adhesive uh, is simply construction adhesive. So we're just going to take a little bit of the construction adhesive. We don't need to make a mess here. We're going to apply it to the steel and then stick it to uh, the plywood. That is going to be the spacer for this. And uh, then we're going to let it sit up overnight. And that's going to then be the basis for the hammer form. Yeah, lots of clamps are needed to get this thing put together. So initially, I'm not worried about much, just uh, as long as it fits on the plywood. Get a clamp in there every once in a while and get it all buttoned up. And then I'm prepping the other plate, right? So now I've got the one set uh, set aside to dry. Just like every good cooking show, I'm now prepping the other part that's going to have to mate up. Now the holes, again, are all registered. I drew them up in the computer. So once I get the holes drilled through the first one, I register them to the other plate and away we go. Uh, but first, I have to clean up the plywood edge, which I just did. Pulled out the router table, knocked the edges off, all done. Uh, it's only a little bit scary when you're going right up against the steel, but that pilot bearing is going to work fine. Anyway, the rest of it, it all looks a bit freaky, but a little bit of wood, a little bit of woodwork, that's never a bad day. Okay, so this part then goes in, and I had to be ultra careful to not get any construction adhesive adhesive in around that bolt hole because if you get those bolts if they make contact with that construction adhesive you'll never get it out of there it will be part of it so i'm being real careful leaving lots of gap around where the the, the bolts go not worried about it it's going to be just fine and there's lots of adhesive on that uh, so clamp it up throw some more clamps on it tighten those down nicely and uh, set it up overnight to uh, let it harden up and then finish off the next off to the next step All right, so last step, we're going to drill the holes through all. Again, taking the extra time to check and make sure that the glue was uh, not seeping into the blank holes meant that I could get those uh, bolts out. Uh, I don't know how many of you thought that wasn't going to work. Anyway, <laughs> uh, count me as one. You can see here we've got a good space, right? This is the trim that we're trying to make. Uh, it's just about impossible to make, like... Uh, once again, mine's damaged and you can't find better ones anywhere. And you can see now, I hope, the idea is starting to sort of come a little bit clearer. All right, so, you know, I'm making this a, a little bigger, but not appreciably. Anyway, so we're going to then have a corner here, then the cove, which we'll make out of Bondo, and then this other flange is going to go down. Okay, so it's going to be hammered down. And then at the end, all I've got to do is take, take the two ends, take the two ends and then just close them. They don't even have to bend all the way around. The original factory ones never, they fit okay. But just like everything on mass production cars, they're, they're meant to have a pretty high degree of slop in them. So this should be better. I'm not, uh, I should really test it into the grill aperture itself, but I don't see any reason why it won't be good. So anyway, it is what it is. But again, with the original ones, that's why they were cut right here at the corner. A, to make them easier, and B, so that you've got the ability to just sort of run them to where they need to go. And you pinch them in, and you know what? It's close enough. Okay, so we're going to drill out these final holes. So far, everything's going okay. So I'm wondering when the bottom's coming out of this one, but at some point, something will happen. 
All right, let's get after it. Yeah, I left out the footage for drilling the holes. I drilled holes. Uh, next up is going to be making a little tool to create a consistent radius. So I've got the radius measured. Uh, just a little piece of uh, ultra high molecular weight plastic is what I'm using there. Any old thing would work. Uh, just get it sanded and filed to the correct cove shape. And um, then make a tool. <music> Uh, with every drawing I ever make, there's always a flaw in it somewhere. It's not like I do this for a living. So, um, yeah, that wasn't going to work. I needed that to be straight, and I had drawn an extra bit on it. So, out comes the torch. Uh, you know, I could have used the plasma, I suppose, but the torch is sitting right at the back door, and it's a nice day. So, I went out and just quickly cut that out of there. All done. And tidy it up. And that's then the nut plate. So, I'm just going to thread those M10. Uh, running that straight into the plasma cut holes, which is kind of crazy, but it does work. That saves you a ton of work if you could just have the plasma guys do this up for you. It's really, really super easy. Anyway, and that, um, that then is the nut plate all done up. And if you've got a welding table, you can use some blocks and a few clamps to make a nice little vise right on the middle of the table. Uh, all right, so I'm just making sure those two parts fit nicely and they're as precisely fit as they need to be. Okay, that's the base plate done. So again, we're just running that tap straight into the plasma cut hole. So I had them um, cut the hole to the tap drill size. The plasmas these days are actually quite a bit better than they used to be. So I am able to run a tap into that. I got a pretty good thread. Um, let's not go <laughs> pulling on it too hard. It's more than good enough for this kind of stuff. So it's fine. Saves you a ton of work. Uh, rounded, chamfered the edges. And then of course this piece was once again cut too large. So torched it out. And then we've just finished uh, fitting it up as precisely as we can. I just checked it against the other part. And all except for that corner, uh, the fit is just about perfect. So it's fine. This is just backing, right? Like you're just hammering past it. So I probably didn't even need to spend as much time on it as I did. But um, every opportunity for a little bit of skill development, right? So whether it's just making a backing plate that's going to have, you know, really not a whole lot of purpose or whatever. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, why not give it a shot? You get better every time. Anyway, so now all we're going to do is uh, add the Bondo in. Uh, it's about a million degrees in my shop today, so <laughs> I may not do this until later on tonight or tomorrow because uh, it's about 30-something degrees in here. And I'm absolutely dripping, <laughs> so I'm, I'm probably calling it a day. All right, let's, uh, well, we'll carry on when we're carrying on. All right, with the parts all finalized, it's now time to get the long strand uh, fiberglass body filler uh, put into the groove. And with our tool, smooth it out. But before any of that happens, we're going to just get a little bit of wax and grease remover. We're going to clean these things one final time and then uh, start slinging the Bondo. Anyway, we've got the flow forming tool in uh, from TM Technology. So this is the one that we're, we're not going to use it on all the parts today because I've got my original one and I still haven't broken it. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, go back and watch the other video. But I just thought I'd show you sort of how well these things are built. No sponsorship or anything, but there it is. How nice is that? Okay, so this is what they call their light metal 
It's got to be sort of a beryllium copper or something. I don't know what it is. The fit is just gorgeous. So that's machining quality. That's all that is. Now that's that's a piece of that's a piece of chromoly that's been also heat treated. So it's for sure not going to break. And this is their Delrin insert. Again, the fit's the same. Just that's great. Now my tool's nowhere near as nice as that. Again, I just fabricated that one all by myself, and yeah, like the parts go in. So we're going to start with the rounded and hammer it out. And just like all sheet metal, we're going to go slow, and we're not going to be greedy with it. We're just going to see what it'll give us. I have no idea if this is going to work. So uh, fingers crossed, right? And let's hope everything turns out. Okay, so for those who are interested, this is 22 gauge A2 stainless steel. So it is annealed. It's only 22 gauge. It doesn't need to be any more than that. In fact, I was quite worried if I went to a heavier gauge, it would just make my life more miserable. Uh, and it works pretty well, actually. I wasn't too upset with it. Eventually, as I uh, foreshadowed there, I did shatter the tool. It didn't take me very long to finally destroy it. It lasted longer than the tool had lasted before. Um, of course, the one that I bought from TM Technologies lasted perfectly and had no problems. So <laughs> I have a dissimilar metal issue uh, with mine. And you're going to see me pull out some corking tools here. That's just another big chunk of Delrin that I have in the shop that I fashioned into something that looks kind of like a chisel. I use it a fair bit for this sort of thing. Uh, I'm not hitting it with um, any, you know, I'm whacking it pretty hard and under old mallet and then i've got i'm just every hammer i have seems to want to make its way onto this particular project i needed to get that corner turned so that it would sort of lock in a little bit and i could get that final detail knocked into into the radius there's the tool yay we finally broke it no never to return uh so i went back just used the good one so that's the beryllium copper that light metal or whatever that is uh getting the job done it wasn't really, a, this does, this takes like 20 minutes. It does, it takes forever to make everything else. It doesn't take long uh, to do the flow forming. And then you'll see me with these tools. Now I went down to my Princess Auto and they're just a series of uh, round headed tools that you can use with a hammer. They're steel, they're hardened. Um, and I just used it to chase the final form uh, along. And then I, again, that the other corking tool and just beat the living tar out of it and see if I can make it do what I want it to do. Okay, well, I, I don't think I have to worry about fixing that tool anymore. It's it's pretty much going to get recycled at this point. It was a fun adventure, but that's a close uh, for that. And yeah, so far we're looking really good. Actually, aside from the weight of it, it's pretty heavy as an assembly, but uh, it's looking really good. Everything's turning out okay. So it's probably time now to take it out of the frame and start planishing this up and get ready to do some of the final operations, the trimming, the, the bending, the folding, uh, and the polishing, of course. All right, let's get to work. Well, there it is. Hot <laughs> right out of the hammer form. Yeah, that's not bad, that's not bad. It's Kind of bonkers, actually. I just built that thing. That's crazy. Okay, I can see as I knew when I was doing it. Again, there's just some little ripples in along these edges. It just needs to be planished. I'm not too sure what causes that, other than I don't think I'm bending it at quite the same radius as the die. So every once in a while, I hit the die, and it kind of pops in. Like You can feel it while you're doing it, and then you stop, because you know it's going to make work. You get better. I guess I'm going to get better at this as I do it, but like right here... There's just a sequence of ripples you know, along here. It's pretty smooth, so I don't really have too much work to do there. But up here, I'll planish this out. Just going to use a T-steak dolly to do it. Uh, corners are looking really nice, so those all worked out well. And uh, then I guess we get around to trimming. We've got to trim these uh, long flanges off, and we got to do the final fold over. I'm still not 100% sure how that's going to all wrap up. Okay, so planishing took days. Uh, it wasn't just a little bit. I think I've hit this thing maybe a million times. Just, uh, and I am fussy, so it's probably my fault. I probably could have sanded it out, but I just went after it with a hammer and dolly. I do have a T-stake that's the same size as this. I made it specifically for this project. 
but um, the, everything's curved a little bit, so I just you know plunked down and just started whacking the thing. <laughs> maybe it'll maybe it'll planish up nice. I got about a million other things to do on this particular project. So we're going to end it here, folks. And there is going to be a part two and a part three to making your own stainless steel grills. Uh, so far, this has taken me... Uh, I'm going to go way out on a limb. It's about three weeks worth of work. So because the videos don't happen, uh, I have a day job. I work about a million hours in my regular job and I can't get to this stuff very frequently. So I'm going to think that my channel is probably simulating your life a little bit more than some of the guys that crank this stuff out in a week. And I've also never done most of this before. So anyway, thanks for coming along for the ride. That's part one done. Uh, it's going well so far. It's taking a lot longer than I thought, but I think when I go to make the second grill, when I go to make the second surround part, it's going to, the pace is going to pick up a little bit because I've learned a bunch more uh, so far on this project. Anyway, so that's it for this one. Catch you on the next one. Don't forget, keep your stick on the ice.